Senate Bill 353 provides for carbon sequestration. Senator Hewitt on your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members, this is a this is a great bill in my opinion in that it, it helps the environment. Carbon sequestration is the process by which you capture carbon in the air that could be emitted, let's say, at a refinery or a manufacturing facility. You'll capture the carbon from the air, inject it into a, a, a pipeline. We have a tremendous infrastructure of pipelines in the state of Louisiana. Transport it to a, a place that's got a depleted oil and gas reservoir and inject it in the ground for storage. In some cases, it could be resold at a future date uh, to for an, an enhanced oil recovery project. They do a lot of that in Mississippi. I've been part of those in the past. So it's a win-win. It, uh, it takes advantage of our current infrastructure. It cleans the environment. It's a great business opportunity. And Louisiana is well positioned to, to be a leader in carbon sequestration. There's some federal tax credits right now that are available. And so what this bill does is it basically is establishing a framework to allow us to take advantage of this opportunity. And uh, we've had tremendous interest from many, many businesses uh, on this bill. There's still work to be done to kind of keep putting, I'm going to say, more meat on the bones to further develop this opportunity. But we have a framework right now that everyone has agreed to. And uh, we're, you know, we're ready to move forward. We've worked closely with the department and industry, and I think everybody's on board. Thank you, Senator Hewitt. Uh, we do have a question. Representative Boryak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, I first wanted to appreciate you uh, allowing the company in my district to, to work with you uh, last week when you came. Give them a little more time to review uh, the bill. So I do appreciate you being patient. Um, and at the appropriate time, I think this will, I agree, I think this will help a lot of companies in the state, uh, especially in District 47. So at the appropriate time, I, I move favorable. Thank you, Representative Boyak. Not quite the appropriate time. Representative Mincy, on your question. Uh, yes, Senator, thank you. And I, I've got a, a couple questions. I'll try to make it quick. Okay. Um, removing of the pipelines from uh, the, this, what, what, can you explain that, elaborate on that for me? Yeah, I think the, we spent a lot of time sort of trying to debate that. Um, the, the issue is, is trying to define the scope of what is a storage facility. And so we defined a storage facility as, as I'm going to say it's sort of the, the end of the line where you're actually injecting the CO2 in the ground. Um, the you know, pipelines are are generally not part or, nor the source of the CO2 where it's captured. They're not normally defined as part of that. And the reason for the clarification is just there's other things that are already guiding uh, pipelines, lots of statutes and laws and what have you um, directing that. This is about the carbon storage and the liability related to that, et cetera. Okay. So it's not to say that they're not important. They're just defined elsewhere and how that's handled. So that it does have an impact on the liability of the pipelines? You know. Yeah, pipeline liability is already handled someplace else. This is talking about the liability. It could be, yeah, 50-year liability right now for carbon storage. Okay, and if, if you could, the, the Carbon Dioxide Geological Storage Trust Fund, what does that I mean new to the committee but new to the subject what does that actually do yeah that I think that has been in place for a long time <laughs> that's a dedicated fund we we haven't um, really ever used it, it's there in place it's I don't think it has any funding in it whatsoever but I believe the intent would be for it to be kind of like financial security for orphan wells there there will be a funding mechanism where the you know there will be money put aside to um, do any environmental work or abandonment work required at the end. Okay. And my last question, the, the formula that was used, it was just kind of unique. Uh, do you have any, uh, can you give me any elaboration on how that formula was come up with? I cannot. I did not develop the formula, but I think it was, um, I don't, I, I, I cannot honestly tell you how that formula was developed. It was, it was intended to to have payments over a certain number of years, obviously, as a as a funding mechanism. And I, I don't know. I've got um, a gentleman here that's worked with us. Maybe I'll invite Greg to come to the table and see if he can comment on that for you. Yeah, just just on it. It, it could have appear arbitrary, but I just I know there's a there's a method to the madness. So if if you could just, just briefly, sir, sir, have you submitted a white card? 
green a green card, sir. Oh, so, so you did submit a green card. Okay, please introduce yourself to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm Greg Schnocke. I'm Executive Director of Government Relations for Denbury Resources. We're a, a CO2 pipeline operator uh, here in, in uh, Louisiana and an and oil and gas operator. We're headquartered in Plano, Texas, and uh, we operate about 275 miles of CO2 pipeline here in the state. Uh, to answer your question, uh, that's a good question. We're still in some discussion with the department with regard to this formula and how it would work going forward. This all came from a uh, request from the department to uh, engage in the discussion about how store, CO2 storage operations could operate in the state, and this bill was a result of that. So there are certain questions that we've um, parked, I guess, for, for some more discussion with the department. This is one of them with the formula because we're not completely clear how that funding mechanism would work, but I think we're all in agreement there will be some sort of funding for, uh, as the senator uh, pointed out, um, uh, protection of the environment in terms of how the uh, a storage facility would operate. So we're still you know, grappling with this. This was done in 2009. I think there was a rush of, of a number of these types of bills around the country. A lot of things have changed in the, in the, in the United States since 2009. And so, again, with the tax credits and other types of things that have come forward, um, there's a lot of discussion now about how this would actually be implemented and operate, and I think we'll continue that over the, over the next year with the department. We may be back in front of you next year with some additional discussion. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Representative, thank you, Representative Mincy. We do have somebody here from the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, if they'd like to make a brief comment on the issue, uh, we have Blake Canfield here willing to provide information, also Jason Longclose willing to provide information. Thank you, Blake Canfield, uh, Department of Natural Resources. Uh, so as was stated, we have been uh, speaking with Denberry and uh, Senator Hewitt regarding changes that they'd like to see uh, in this 2009 act. Uh, the formula, for instance, I think had set it up of being paid out over a 10 year period and it's now being changed to 12 years. But again, it's something we're gonna probably have to come back towards as we get a better handle on exactly what all is going to be involved. My understanding was that the 12 years more aligned with the type of funding that uh, and or loans that could be uh, garnered by the industry. So that was sort of some of the logic, I think, on that change. Um, but gen in general, uh, the state is very supportive of trying to uh, promote CO2 sequestration. And we think we are very good, uh, have very good uh, both geology, uh, infrastructure and expertise within the state. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Canfield. The board is clear. Um, members, the board is clear. Uh, there's no proposed amendments. I'm going to read the cards in support um, from uh, Mr. Mr. Greg uh, Schnocke, who just uh, spoke, Tyler Gray with Lamoga, Gifford Briggs with Loga, Neil Buckingham with Shell. And I do have one card in opposition from Margie Vicnair Prey with the Sierra Club Delta chapter. I, Okay, Senator Hewitt, uh, Representative Lyons had a question but wasn't able to uh, press the board. If you don't mind, would you take a question? Absolutely. Representative Lyons, on your question. Yes, as, as I look at this and, and I was listening to Representative Borak's um, response and, and all to it, I just have one question about eminent domain. Um, can you kind of explain to me, you know, how it works or just the aspect of it in the bill? I'm not sure that I can. But I'll I'll see if Mr. Uh, Mr. Greg would like to come comment on that. Specifically, are you looking at a specific area representative in the bill? No, just in general. In general, okay. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Representative, um, the eminent domain provisions of this particular area of the statute are un are really unchanged. What was what was done as a technical matter was that the eminent domain aspects of this particular title were moved to another 
area of the code where the eminent domain uh, authority rests for other types of uh, activities. And so, in general, there is authority for uh, eminent domain for CO2 pipelines in general, but this storage uh, element, when they when we removed um, uh, CO2 pipelines from the st from the storage aspects of this particular title of this particular area of the, of the code, we just moved the eminent domain piece to the other more general area of the of the uh, code as a technical matter. So nothing nothing has changed from current law uh, today. If that's a part of your question, that was my question. I wanted to know how the current law. What, what would the change would be in that aspect? Okay. No, no change whatsoever. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Representative Lyons. The board is clear. Senator, could you close on your bill? I would just uh, ask that you all um, move favorable on this bill. I think it's a great opportunity for our state. It's going to be good for the environment. And uh, I'm looking forward to continue to, to work on this opportunity. Thank you, Senator. Do I have a motion? Uh, well, I see Representative Boryak move favorably. Are there any objections? Hearing no objections, Senate Bill 353 moves favorably. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members.